Madrid is the most beautiful city I have ever been to. A place where the streets are always alive, the wine never stops flowing, the sun is warm and so is the comradeship. But I'm not just any man. I'm a Lovecraftian so I need one more thing to satisfy my eldritch desires. Lovecraft books. After raiding through a few major bookstores in Madrid, I struck tentacles. I think I spent something like 200 euros. I guess that's about $220 in total and came back with like 15 books I think. So perhaps you guys would like to see what I've bought. Now this isn't a book review really, just an overview of the books I found and my thoughts on them and Madrid and all that sort of stuff. Also yes, since I got these books in Madrid these are all 100% in Spanish. I'm not fluent in Spanish yet, but I am actively learning it and since I know most of Lovecraft's tales well, in some cases having memorized certain notable sentences and parts of passages like old Zadok Allen's monologue in the shadow over Innsmouth, I found it easy to understand the books. By the way, that's a very good tip if you're learning a language. Read a book you know well in a foreign language. I was asked on Instagram if these books are available in English. Well, to clear this up, I don't know, but I really doubt it. I went through the books to check and most are printed in Spain and come from Spanish publishing houses. The majority of the books with illustrations are illustrated by Spanish or Latin American artists. Furthermore, I always keep my eye open for new editions of Lovecraft stories. English editions, obviously, and I have never seen any of these Spanish books appearing in my searches, meaning the same looking book but with English text. Visually, these books are really good looking, don't you agree? Most have colorful, weird, original artworks of key scenes from the mythos. Each artist has a different way of drawing and painting, so visually it's also quite varied. It can be fun in itself to just skip the stories and gaze upon that art. Almost all these books except for one are direct translations of Lovecraft's own stories. Given that I have so many books here and from different publishers, there is some overlap, meaning for example, The Shadow Over Innsmouth will appear in four different books. Perhaps a waste of money, logically speaking, but when I walked into these stores after having a nice buzz from Spanish Rioja wine and saw entire sections dedicated to just Lovecraft, well, in the words of Wilbur Watley, Mr. Armitage, I calculate I have got to take that book home. Now, I don't know how it is for you guys in your countries, but here in Switzerland, the collection of books dedicated to horror, never mind just even dedicated to Lovecraft, is pathetic. Pathetic. I live in Zurich, the biggest city of Switzerland, and I went to Orel Fusli, the biggest bookshop in Zurich. And this is their horror section, in German, obviously. Hmm. All simple paperbacks, three copies of Innsmouth, The Nameless City, Mountains of Madness, and a meager compilation that maybe has five, six stories in it. Uh, now let's have a look at their English language section. One compilation of a decent size, admittedly, and a... What? A cookbook based off of the Necronomicon called Necronomnomnomicon... Oh god. And... Oh shit. Oh god, what is that? Is that... Is that goddamn Lovecraft country? Oh fuck. So for me to see all these Lovecraft books at once, it was like when I was 16 years old and managed to bullshit my way past the bouncer in a strip club and I saw tits for the first time in real life. My eyes fell out and I just wanted to put my hands on everything. The only time I saw this many Lovecraft books in one spot was when I toured Providence, Rhode Island and visited a store dedicated to Lovecraft. However, that felt different. That store was specifically about Lovecraft and given that this is the hometown of Lovecraft, it's obvious that there should be some sort of shop dedicated to him. But in this case, however, these two shops, Casa del Libro and Funak, are very much mainstream and located in the main streets of Madrid's shopping area, Plaza de Callao and Gran Vía. If you happen to ever be in Madrid, check these areas out. In other words, the shop in Providence was for Lovecraft fans. The two Madrid shops were for normal people. Uh, yes, sorry my friends, we aren't normal. Join the cult and get used to it. I must admit I did feel a swelling of emotion then, beyond just the thinking, whoa, I'm gonna buy some cool books now. Madrid has always been a city I have felt most comfortable in, like it was Johannes Ley and I was a deep one. 
If you've watched my gloom syndrome video and relate to it, well, this place is a sweet sedative to that syndrome. A place where my weird self could feel at home and to see that the writer I love most, the writer who has provided such comfort in lonely moments in life, to see these weird tales not tucked away in some forgotten niche bookstore in some corner of Madrid, but presented openly in two of the biggest shops in Madrid, it made me feel like even I can belong there, that in this beautiful city there are kindred souls, like-minded individuals, who are into weird fiction and horror stories from Lovecraft, which made me feel so much more comfortable there. I wondered if Spaniards are into Lovecraft. Well, they must be, right? The economic law of supply and demand implies it, correct? Otherwise, why would such shops, very commercial and profit-driven shops, whose floor space has been fought over by a million and one other books and products to be sold, take the time and space to dedicate it just to Lovecraft? Uh, 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 but wait a minute, not just to Lovecraft. Check this out. Nearby, I found sections dedicated to writers such as Robert E. Howard, Ramsey Campbell, Edgar Allan Poe, Clark Ashton Smith, William Hope Hodgson, Arthur Macken, Lord Dunsany, Thomas Ligotti, Ambrose Bierce, Algernon Blackwood and Robert W. Chambers. Oh my god. I also felt happiness and pride for the old gentleman of Providence. How proud and astonished he would be, he who never really saw financial success barring a few moments in his life, to see his words published in beautifully crafted books placed in bright displays, gazed upon by thousands of customers each day in a city thousands of miles away across the ocean. I also wondered what Lovecraft would make of Spain. We all know that he wasn't fond of all nationalities and ethnicities. I've never seen him mention Spaniards before except twice, firstly in the Call of Cthulhu where he merely calls one excitable. <laughs> A fair description, having been around the Spanish people enough myself. And secondly, Dr. Munoz, in Cool Air, whom he described as a man of birth, cultivation and discrimination, possessing a high-bred face of masterful, though not arrogant, expression, and giving the overall impression of a man of striking intelligence and superior blood and breeding. I guess if he would describe a Spaniard as such, he couldn't have disliked the culture in totality. Maybe it is a bit of a silly video to make on Lovecraft books that the majority of you guys cannot read, but I know some of you are Spanish speakers. To you guys, I say this. Para vosotros consideré hablar en español durante todo el video, pero probablemente mi español aún no está en el nivel suficiente. No preocupéis, algún día quizás puede hacer un video especial para vosotros. Ahora tengo bastante libros para practicar, ¿no? And since I've got you here, let's talk about Madrid quickly. Madrid is the most beautiful, amazing city I've ever been to. A 24-hour city unlike Seoul or Tokyo, both cities I have seen which are also cities running 24 hours a day, Madrid negates the bright neon signs and strangling modernity and retains its old world culture, architecture and elegance. Not to say that Seoul or Tokyo are ugly mind you, they're beautiful in their own way. In Madrid, museums are plentiful and diverse and for the antiquarians there is never a boring moment. The food is always excellent and the people are generally friendly and look like happy people. And you know what? Happiness, it's infectious. One does need basic Spanish to really enjoy the city though. I find myself at times when the moon is gibbous and waning, walking in the old cobblestone streets in between centuries old buildings and becoming quite choked up with a swelling of heated emotion and love for the city, country and people. Ironically, it's a place to which I have no birthright, yet it is a place to which I feel intensely more connected than any other place I've ever lived. Simply the sound of a flamenco guitar, the taste of a strong Rioja in the warm sun, or hearing the chatter and laughter of Spanish in the streets on a Saturday night is enough to fill me with a feeling no place has ever done. Is this how Lovecraft felt about Providence? Probably it was. Even here in my weird studies of Lovecraft, Madrid has provided some cause to reflect and has provided some beautiful books as well. So if any of you are ever in Madrid, feel free to contact me by email or Instagram and I will try to come down from Zurich to say hello. We'll go for tapas and a few beers. Anyway, that's it basically for this video. I really enjoyed showing off these prized possessions of mine. Thanks for watching this video and lending me your time to go on about Lovecraft in Spain. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, nos vemos de nuevo en el próximo video. Adios amigos.